All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the cooling system in this Honda BF90D. Uh, that's a 2010 model back there. Uh, we're gonna be going through this thing from top to bottom, all the things that I did to get this motor cooling and flushing properly. Um, everything from thermostats, water pressure relief valve, also known as a poppet valve, um, just the flushing this motor with a product called Ridlime and everything in between. So all of the things that could be potentially cause you issues uh, with your cooling system on your Honda BF90 or 75D. All right, before we get started on the motor itself, I wanted to show you what's in the service manual, starting with the maintenance schedule. Specifically talking about the cooling system, we're looking at the thermostat. It looks like that's a check every 200 hours. All right, but I usually do mine more often than that because I run my motor in salt water and um, checking that out and cleaning my, my thermostats more often than 200 hours, usually uh, 100 hours or so. That's about when I'm doing mine every six months or so. Um, also, it has a note here about cleaning cleaning the, uh, the cooling passages. Um, yeah, there's a note there. It says basically when operating in salt, turbid, muddy water, the engine should be flushed with clean water after each use. That's sort of a given, but uh, some people don't do that. I know that the first person before me didn't do that to the, this motor that I have, and, and that's why I had all these problems. Uh, the last thing here is listed is the water pump, and that's a check every 200 hours as well, but I would recommend changing it. If you have that thing apart, you might as well just change it out. We're going to talk about the thermostats, both of them. They had in the block thermostat. We're also going to be talking about the relief valve, the water pressure relief valve. That's located here on the back side of the mount case, also known as a poppet valve. We're also going to be talking about the flush valve, which is located here on the starboard side of the mount case, and just basic flushing, the whole entire flushing system itself. All right, moving over to thermostat identification. Uh, there's a note here that says, don't get these confused. Um, these are, they look identical. And... The only difference between them is are the temperature ratings, okay? The head thermostat is a 50 degrees Celsius thermostat. The block thermostat actually have two choices. The normal standard one that comes with the motor is a 60 degrees Celsius thermostat. And there is one for cold water operations that is a 72 degrees Celsius thermostat. Uh, what I do to keep the getting from getting these confused is I mark mine with a Sharpie, as you see here in the little pictures. Um, this does have a paint mark on mine. It's a little blue mark, but I flip them over. They are marked on the bottom, as you see here. They are marked with the temperature rating, but it's super, super hard to see. All right, jumping over to the next page here. There's a little more deeper dive into the thermostats themselves. You'll see a note here that says if you've, this for the block thermostat, it says if you've got this plastic cover, it needs to be replaced with an aluminum type. And here's the part number. And actually the part number is a little updated here. Uh, I scratched the 000 out and put H01 on that part number. When you're replacing these thermostats, you want to make sure that you have some new O-rings to put in to, to replace the old O-rings, especially if it's been a while. Definitely have a few of these on standby in case you have some issues with it getting a good seal. I try not to use um, any type of sealant or gasket maker if I can keep from doing that. Uh, try to use just get a good seal without the gasket maker material. So that just keeps you from having to scrape it off the next time you service the thermostats. All right, moving over to the water pressure relief valve, also known as a poppet valve. That valve sits on the back side of the motor here on the mount case. You'll have to remove the cowlings off the motor to be able to get to this area. Also, this space in here is super tight because there's an oil pump that sits at the bottom side of the motor that's in the way. So you'll have to remove um, a couple hoses and some things to get to this area. So it's super tight. So it's that bolt there that goes to that hole. That was the one that's difficult to get to. Uh, also, make sure that your valve is oriented properly. When you go back in, put that back in there. Um, not really sure how you could get that upside down, but they are making a note here to make sure you know which side the valve goes where. Uh, don't see how you could get the cover on without doing it the other way but they have a note there so um make sure that you replace the o-ring okay so on mine i replaced the o-ring but it still le leaked a little water so i ended up having to put just a little dab of um gasket maker around that just a real super super thin layer of gasket maker around there just make sure you don't uh, cause this uh 
valve to, you know, if you put too much on there, it could cause that uh, interference with the valve working. So uh, on top of this valve cover, the water pressure relief valve cover, the, there is a hose that plugs into the top of that. And that goes around to the vapor separator tank. And that's, that um, feeds to the fuel cooling. That's the, basically the fuel cooling system. There's a water jacket on the bottom of the VST over on the port side of the motor. So, and we'll talk through that um, when we get on the motor itself. Uh, also back here, uh, there's a little uh, water tube joint, which is located right here, right there. And that feeds the P-tube that goes to the back of the motor and pees out of the side of your motor, also known as a water check tube or a telltale, um, commonly known as a P-tube, okay? So if your system or your the engine's not flush or peeing properly, you may want to look at this and see if it's clogged up all the way up to the mount case. Because again, we'll get into the mount case a little bit later and uh, in this video and discuss some of the, the issues and, and some of the water flow inside these that could cause issues with things clogging up. All right, jumping over to the flush valve. All right, the flush valve is fairly easy to, to maintain and service. Uh, I would just make sure that you're, you're a uh, little note here that you may want to be super careful when you're pulling this apart. It has a spring there and things tend to fly and I ended up losing my valve in the grass. So just keep in mind when you're pulling this out um, and to service it and clean it out, if it's clogged up or just to service it, that you uh, are real careful, put your hand around this and pull it out real gently. Um, it, it is sometimes difficult to get this out of the, out of the hole up there, but uh, just do what you can to try to to uh, maintain control of all the parts and pieces there. Uh, additionally, my hose clamps were rusted out, so that's something else you want to look at. This hose was leaking on me, and uh, that jumps over to this um, other joint fitting right here, this um, tube joint fitting that's curved. It goes back inside the um, mount case, and my, in my case, this inside the mount case was clogged up, and I'll show you that in a, uh, a mount case that I have here, I'll show you an example of what I did to get this unclogged. Another thing we'll talk about is changing out the water pump and all the parts and pieces that go with that. Here's the water pump maintenance kit, and that kit comes with all the items here that I have marked with an asterisk. It comes with the water pump o-ring, the impeller, the woodruff key, as well as the impeller gasket. We'll also go over the areas and items that you need to grease while we have this thing apart. All right, so jumping right into it, on the starboard side, this is where your flush valve goes, right here. It is important that you keep that cleaned out, and I'll show you that on the motor itself. Uh, but it goes up inside that cavity there, and it comes out here, and that hose go, jumps over to this hose fitting, and then back into the mount case. And now I'll show you up on the top side of the mount case what that looks like. So that's where that comes in at, right there. All right, a little deeper dive on the uh, flush port side of the, uh, of the motor um, and the, where the flush valve goes here. Uh, I wanted to show you, this is sort of what I did to get this cleaned out. Now I used a drill, and this is a guitar string that I connected to my drill and all I did was bore that out until I got it cleaned out because this was an, the entire thing was clogged up. I also used a, a flathead and some other little tools to get that cleaned out, the, the sediment and buildup that was in there, the scaling that was built up and clogging this flush valve, flush port area. All right, here's a representation of what that looks like in the drill. And that's what I used to bore out the uh, clogged area right there in that uh, particular hose fitting. It was completely clogged up inside the housing of the uh, mount case. So I'll show you what that looks like on the other side. All right, with the drill in there, you can see that I've got it all the way inserted all the way through to this cavity here. There we go. Another thing you can do is potentially use a, a big syringe. And I rigged this up um, with a couple little hoses that I had laying around the syringe uh, set I got off of Amazon, I think. And this uh, hose came with it. And then I found something in the garage here that uh, fit, that kind of helped me whittle this down to a WD-40 um, little little hose there, and that fits great in these uh, in, in in these tubes because you need something that's flexible that can bend. Um, 
And you can try squirting some red lime or some sort of descaler, CLR, that sort of thing. Uh, I also, on my motor, I did use some CLR and red lime on, on these to help, you know, loosen things up and get things cleaned out. Also note that I did use, um, I did try to blow air in there and try to blow that out, you know, using some high pressure air. Uh, that didn't work for me. This Again, this thing was so clogged up, I just couldn't get anything else to work except for my handy dandy drill um, and that, that uh, guitar string. Same thing applies to this side of the motor, the port side of the motor. This is where the fuel cooling hose comes back into the mount case. All, this ca all these cavities are connected together. And back here, you'll see a small cavity down there and that's where the water pressure relief valve is as well. So you can see maybe I've got a little wire down there. I'm waving back and forth. All that's connected together. Okay, so if you were to stick a wire through there, you might be able to see through there where that comes out, but you can see the wire there. Um, additionally, there's a, the telltale, which is right here. This is where your telltale hose would be connected or your P hose would be connected. You can see how that could get clogged up easily because there's just a small little, little small hole there. So there's quite a few areas in, on this mount case that could potentially get clogged up. And one last thing on the mount case here uh, in the water pressure relief valve area. You see there's a bunch of gunk and just uh, sediment build up, scaling built up here uh, where the cover for the water pressure relief valve sits. Uh, you're going to have to get that cleaned off. To do that, you could use a, something with a flat surface like the putty knife. Um, just, just scrape that flat, especially if it's got some other gasket make material in there and that's, that's, that was using to seal that, uh, that cover before. Um, or you can use possibly a wire brush. Uh, this, this one came out of a gun cleaning kit and uh, just something to get it nice and clean and smooth so that you can get a good seal on it when you put the cover back on with that gasket. This is what the water pressure relief valve looks like on the mount case without the, uh, of course this is on my bench. So uh, you can see what that looks like, especially that back bolt. That's what we're gonna try to get off. I'm gonna show you how to get that off. And then I'll show you how to modify that bolt to make it easier to service in the future. I stack some, some washers on it. I've got some uh, gasket making material to hold them all together. But uh, that's what I ended up doing. I just stacked some washers up on there and I'll show you what that looks like once it's in the hole. I have like three stainless steel washers and I've got some gasket making material to hold them together. Um, and that just helps the bolt raise up enough above that cover, just enough to be able to get a wrench in there and get it at an angle. And you can make that angle. All right, one last thing about the mount case, and this has to do with storing your motor in an up position. If you store your motor in the up position, you risk the chance of having water or sediment or any salt water that didn't get rinsed out settling and clogging up the bottom of that motor inside the passageways there. All right, guys, today we're going to be doing our cooling system maintenance on this Honda BF90D. Uh, we're going to start flushing this motor with a product called Ridlime. Uh, we're going to be putting about five gallons of water in that bucket, and we'll put about two gallons of whatever's left in that bucket. I think there's about two and a half gallons left in there uh, to make the solution. And then we'll use our sump pump here connected to the earmuffs and run the motor uh, until it gets about 100, 110 degrees, 115 degrees inside the bucket. Um, and once that gets up to the right temperature and enough, nice and warm, we'll be able to flush the rest of the motor for a couple hours on this flush port there. And then we're gonna also check our thermostats and our water pressure relief valve, which is down below the side covers there. So let's pull those side panels off and uh, we'll get started. All right, pulled the top cover off and now we're gonna pull the side, side panels. Anybody that's ever pulled these off knows they're kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna point out the bolts real quick and that way you know um, the areas and spots you need to take the bolts off here to get these side panels off. They're 10 millimeter. Uh, most of these are 10 millimeter, I should say. So there's one here, there's one right here. Let's see if I can get a little bit down here. There's one here, 
and there's one supposed to be there, but that's sheared off, uh, corroded and sheared off, so I'll have to fix that one. There's one here, there's one here. There's an eight millimeter here you'll have to pull. You'll have to disconnect this um, trim, manual trim wire connector. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter there as well. There's one here, there's a five millimeter hex right here. Uh, 10 millimeter there, 10 millimeter there, there, also there. There's one here. Also, there's a little grommet here that we got to pull. I'll show you how to do that. And there's a 10 millimeter there. All right, when you're pulling these panels off, there's a lot of parts and pieces that can fly and you can lose. So make sure that you pay attention to what you're doing here when you pull these out and set them aside somewhere safe. Um, I usually put mine in the boat so they can't get lost in the grass or on the on the cement here. So uh, it's just to, just be careful what you, when you start pulling these things off. They are, it, things will fly and come off. So uh, just keep an eye out for those. All right, pull this electrical connector off. You stick your screwdriver. If it's if it's if you can see your screwdriver, that's not where you need to be. You need to be behind the tab. So you get behind the tab, pull the tab, and then you can be able to pull the electrical connector out of there. All right, on the port side panel, once you get it loose, um, you're, you're going to have to take off this grommet right here that you see. It's a little hard to do with one hand, but I usually use a screwdriver or something, push that through, and um, and then it'll come right out of there. All right, pull, push it through, and then it comes, comes loose. Again, a reminder, make sure you put your, your side panels in the uh, boat or something just to make sure you don't lose anything. Um, again, these little parts and pieces, even these little um, little washers, grommet type washers, standoffs, they uh, they fall out as well. So just be careful uh, so you don't lose anything. All right, we got our bucket full of water. Um, there's about six or seven gallons in there. We're going to test our sump pump to make sure it's good and working because we use these seasonally. Um, it's not all the time, but these sump pumps also have an issue where these things are designed for a lot of water flow and not a lot of water pressure so just keep that in mind um, so what I'm gonna do to, to make the sump pump work properly what I've what I've discovered is I've got to pull the valve out of here so that doesn't provide a lot of restriction and then I'm gonna also pull this head thermostat just to test it again just to crack it and make sure water's flowing through so I'll pull the head thermostats again to, to not provide restriction and that we get water from the um, from the bottom down here in the mount case all the way up to the top part of the motor. All right, to remove this flush valve, um, I just loosen the bolt up enough and then we'll pull it out. Just make sure you don't loosen this all the way up because there's a spring in there and a valve in there and it'll fall over, fly all over the place, you'll lose it. All right, got the bolt off. Real slowly pull that out of there. Make sure you don't lose it. And we'll set that aside here for a minute. We got our flush valve out here, and we went ahead and reconnected and reseated our cover. All right, pulled our head thermostat out, it's sitting right here. Doesn't look too bad in there actually, and I put the cover back on. And what I'll do is turn, hook this up, and turn it on, and then we'll crack this head up thermostat cover just enough so we can see if water flows out of there. Got our sump pump hooked up, and everything is good to go. We're going to go ahead and give it some power. Oh, it goes here, right. We got a little pee going on here. Water flow. And we're gonna crack this open. Let's see if we're gonna get some water coming out of it. There we go. We're good on that. Again, this is just a test to make sure that this is working um, and that we do get water flow all the way to the top of the motor before we get started. All right, we've reinstalled the flush valve. We reinstalled the head thermostat. We hooked up a little hose here to the Telltale water check tube, a little spare check tube that I had. And then I hooked up to a larger, like a fuel line here down, so we could get capture that, uh, that, that P stream, that strong P stream down into the bucket uh, without it getting all over the ground and basically draining the bucket. So we're gonna crank this motor up and uh, we'll put some red lime in here and then circulate that for again until it gets up to about 115, 120 degrees. And then we'll turn it off 
and then we'll hook the sump pump up to again the flush port we'll have to pull that flush valve out again we'll pull our thermostats out again and uh, we'll run the rest of the day a couple hours probably on the flush port just to make sure we get a good flush on this motor with our rid line okay got our water up to temperature it's about 110 degrees ish 15 degrees when we turn the motor off we're going to go ahead and pull this flush valve again and then we'll pull our head thermostat as well as our block thermostat which is up here all right went ahead and removed this flush valve already we're just sitting over here again on our little bench here and we went ahead and removed the cover for the head thermostat as you can see it's still hot it's open so that's a good sign we know that it's working and we'll pull that and we'll go take a look at the block thermostat and see if it's doing the same thing all right our head thermostat area doesn't look too bad it's pretty clean in there actually so um yeah not a lot of not a lot of build up and then we're going to go ahead and pull our block thermostat which i've already pulled the bolts off and then i filed out a little groove in here just so i can get this thermostat cover off easy so it's a little challenging sometimes to get something in there to pop it loose since it's a loon it fits a lot tighter than the plastic ones so you can see i can crack that and get it open all right i went ahead and pulled the thermostat looks like the valve is uh cooled off enough so it's not sticking up um but the cover looks good again i put a little groove in my cover just so i can make it easy to get that on or off when i need to service it and this doesn't look too bad in there either it's got a little bit of sediment but not too bad i don't know if you can see that or not uh, we'll get it all cleaned up i right, went ahead and put the head thermostat cover back on as well as the block thermostat cover back on tighten those down and what we're going to do now is turn this sump pump on running it through the flush port and we'll do that for a couple let it run for a couple hours we we'll turn everything on and it's flushing away with that warm solution and what we'll do here we've got our thermostats and we'll drop them in the bucket and let them get cleaned while they're sitting just sitting there so again as a test what i like to do while this is running uh just to make sure that everything's good still i'll go ahead and loosen this cover up a little bit i've got it hand tight so it's not hard to take off and i just loosen that up and up just to see some Red line flow out of there to make sure it's getting to the top of the motor, and it is. We'll tighten that down and let this thing run. All right, we're about an hour into this flush. Uh, as another test, you can do it. I went ahead and pulled the thermostats out of the um, red line there, and they look good. They look nice and they're nice and clean now. Um, and I went ahead and made sure that we marked them properly. So this is a block thermostat, and you can see see that or not but that's 60 degrees celsius thermostat and this is the head thermostat and that's a 50 degrees celsius thermostat and what i did here is i heated some water up um let's see if i can get that about 145 degrees i'm gonna drop these in make sure they open up and we'll see how that goes all right so the head thermostat's fully open and the block thermostat is partially open, but they look good. So that right, because this block thermostat is right at 140 degrees, is right at that temperature rating, 60 Celsius. So, um, so this this is a good test. Another thing you want to do while you're flushing this thing with red line is check your your water flow to your VST. All right, to so this water jacket here. Um, this is your fuel cooler. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that this water jacket is getting proper in and out water flow and it's not too not too hard to test that um, the easiest way to do it you can pull your hoses off here or you could just pull your hose right off the mount case in which case the water is going to flow out towards you the water is going to flow into the jacket up here and then back out over on this hose here you can't hardly really see it and that's going to go to your water pressure relief valve the top of your water pressure relief valve up here okay so um, that's that hose right there. So an easy test is just to pull the hose. And make sure you get out of the way before you get sprayed. I want this stuff in your eyes. And then 
put it back on. So you got good flow coming out. Then you can come over here to the water pressure relief valve and pull that hose off. Hard to see. Make sure you got some water flow coming coming from there. Put it back on. All right, it's been a couple hours and we're running out of daylight here, so we're going to turn this thing off and uh, disconnect the hose, the green hose here, and we're going to hook up the um, the regular house hose here and flush some fresh water through it. Make sure we're good. We'll empty this container and see how much um, gunk we saw that you know stuff sediment that we see in the bottom of this, just to see what we got out of it. I've, flush this several times before in the past so we may um, not have very much in there but I can show you some pictures of the other times I've flushed this motor and it is a mess so I've done a lot of work trying to get this motor cleaned out especially all the stuff that was clogged up in that mount case all right this looks pretty good actually um, compared to some other previous flushes this is actually looking really good so um, yeah coming along we came a long way with this motor for sure all right I pulled my little hose off there and next we're going to pull this water pressure relief valve show you how to pull that it's a little challenging to get that bolt off back there so I'll show you what I used to get that off all right, you're going to need a couple closed in 12 point um, wrenches, 10, 10 millimeter. Uh, this is a, an offset, 40 degree offset. That's what you're going to need to get that back bolt off there. And then you'll need this regular standard um, type. But uh, what I did with that back, that back bolt, I did modify it slightly and put some washers on, stack some washers on it um, so it's easier to get to. And that way I don't have to use my offset wrench. I can just use the regular one to get it off in, uh, for future services. Got the back bolt up and took the front bolt off and it's pretty easy to get this out once you get that those bolts up and we'll pull that valve out next take a look at the valve it looks pretty good it's nice and clean and not a whole lot of sediment down in there so we're good to go what we'll do is we'll clean this up the surface up with where it has some gasket making uh, material that I have on there this tends to leak, so I always put some sort of gasket making material on there, um, which is right here. And uh, we'll clean that up. I also use the same gasket maker on this uh, cover as well. These tend to leak as well as, again, you can see corrosion here. So just to make sure it doesn't leak, I put gasket maker on that one and that one because they're so difficult to get to. So I cleaned the surface up here with a water pressure relief valve. Uh, took a wire brush to it, took a rag to it, got it all cleaned up. It's great thing about this gasket maker is it's very rubbery, non-hardening. It's perfect for this kind of uh, application. Also, I removed my flush valve cover and uh, cleaned that up as well here. And we are going to apply just a small amount, very thin coat on the cover here as well as the surface here around the um, cavity there. So uh, we'll put a very small amount, make sure that it, it doesn't inter interfere with the uh, functioning um, portions of the valve. All right, I put a small, super, super thin coat of uh, gasket maker on this, on the surface of this cover area. And then what I'll do is reinsert the valve and we'll, uh, I'll show you what I do on that back bolt so it makes it easier to service in the future. I reinserted the valve, it's in place, this looks good. And here's the cover, we're getting ready to slide that in there. I've got the, the bolt on the back, um, in the back hole already. As you can see on this bolt, I've stacked up about three stainless steel washers and that helps get that bolt up just above this cover so you can get a regular closed in wrench on it and without having to use an offset so it's just a lot easier to get off also on this cover uh, make sure your o-ring is good uh, and this one is fairly new so i'm not going to replace it but in the event that you do your normal services you may want to have a few of these on on hand um, this this gasket or this o-ring gasket is the same on this 
water pressure relief valve as it is up here on the thermostats, both of them. So same part number for, for all three. Also, make sure you grease your bolts up. Anything that touches or near water on these motors, you got to grease the bolts up. Um, I grease my bolts for, for everything down here. Everything basically, in, you know, including the water, uh, the temp thermostats, including the thermostats, as well as all of the bolts that are down here below, uh, I'll just say the boat line, if you will. I, I make sure I put grease on everything. Um, otherwise, you're going to end up with corrosion, like the one issue that I have down here. So, um, yeah, whoever had this motor and boat before, they didn't do that. So that's why that bolt sheared off there. All right, I got everything reseated. The cover's on here. The bolts are tightened down. I've got my hose that goes over to the VST back on the top of this cover. And my telltale water check tube reconnected here. All right, next we're moving on to the flush valve. Uh, I've already got this cleaned up and put some new gasket making uh, material or gasket maker on here. And it's good to go, ready to go. I'll pull, put, here's the valve and uh, we'll reseat that and put that back on the motor. All right, I got the flush valve reseated, cover back on, the valve's inside and the uh, bolt is greased and reinserted there, tightened down. All right, next we're gonna put our head and block thermostats back in. All right, we pulled our thermostat covers off. Looks pretty clean in there. I don't know if we can see what's going on in there. Pretty clean. Got our covers down here. Uh, point to note about the covers, make sure you pull your gaskets out on these and put a little um, oil from your motor here. Just rub some oil on this uh, from your dipstick and get, get them all oiled up so that they seal good. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't get these bolts mixed up. These shorter bolts are with the, the block thermostat and the longer bolts are with the head thermostat. And make sure you grease your bolts up. And then we're going to go ahead and do all that and get our thermostats put back in the right place. All right, we got our head thermostat back in and our cover on. Bolts are greased up and in place and tightened down. Same thing with the block. We are good to go. All right, we hooked it up to the house hose to the flush port. Just to make sure that we're good on this, we flushed all, everything out in here. Uh, again, making sure that the valves are working properly. Our valves are in place, as well as the thermostats. And the house hose pushes enough pressure to be able to have all those valves in place and not have an issue pushing water out of the motor. So um, that's a good thing. All right, no issues that I can see. Looks good. All right, we've got the house hose hooked up to the earmuffs and we're going to flush this motor one last time, check for leaks with just regular fresh water and uh, make sure that we don't have any leaks, um, especially down here on the flush valve, the little hose, as well as the uh, water pressure relief valve as well as the thermostats. All right, we got this thing hooked up. I'll check it for leaks, all as well. Nothing there, nothing there. Nothing back here. Speed stream. On that side. All looks good. We already ran it up to higher RPMs just to make sure that it's all warmed up. So. All right, moving on to the water pump. We're gonna change that out, show you what to do there. Um, so far, what I've done is I've loosened up these two bolts on this side. I've also loosened, taken the cover off of this um, plate here, which is right there. Uh, these are 14 millimeter bolts, by the way. And, and I've also loosened up these two and I pulled it off just enough so you can, got a little crack there. All right, we got the lower unit off. Everything looks pretty good. Taking a look inside here just to make sure that we don't have any super crazy stuff going on all looks well we'll grease all that up as well as these uh these gears for the drive shaft and shifter 
All right, let's jump into getting this water pump off. And also something else you need to pay attention to or have on hand is a cradle or something to put your lower unit in once you get it off or lay it down on, on something padded so you don't want to damage anything there. All right, we pulled our four bolts off of the uh, cover and uh, got it to break free because you'll, you'll have to use a screwdriver or something in here to sort of get things loosened, loosened up to break that free. So when you pull that off, that Woodruff key could pop out of there, so just be careful of that. And um, as, you see, as you see, I've got the kit here. This kit comes with the impeller, the little O-ring gasket, as well as a uh, Woodruff key and a flat gasket here. And uh, we've got our grease ready to go. So we'll pop this off and see what we got inside here. So we pulled that off. Our Woodruff key is sitting right here. We'll pull that off, put that in my hand, and then you see all the junkets in there. Let's see. And this doesn't look too bad. I just had it replace, or I just replaced this not too long ago, so it doesn't look too bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull that off, this plate off, and replace and scrape the, the bottom here and, and replace that gasket. Uh, the green gasket here. All right, we clean that up. It's nice and uh, smooth now. I did that with a wire brush as well as a little um, razor blade scraper there. And I cleaned up the plate. And before you um, replace everything, and before you replace the, the rubber part of the, um, the water pump, the impeller here, you wanna make sure that you make note of the direction that those little blades are, are going. So, um, you know, you can see, actually you see on the metal sort of imprinted there. So that's a good indicator of the direction you want to spin the, the shaft right here. When you, when you put this thing on, uh, you want to make sure that those impeller uh, blades are going in the right direction, okay? All right, we placed our, our plate along with the gasket underneath that, green side up and part number up. Make sure that you get that in right. Should everything should line up properly with these two um, little uh, tabs sticking up. We're going to put the uh, impeller on next, and as you see there, there's a little groove there for the Woodruff key. The Woodruff key is going to sit right here in this little flat surface, the flat side to the surface, of course. The Woodruff key is going to go into that little groove. The top side of the impeller doesn't have a groove on it as you see here it's covered up so the bottom side is where you want that groove so we're going to slide that over the shaft put the woodruff key in place and slide this impeller over the woodruff key that's how it's supposed to go and that slides down just like that okay we greased up our uh our gasket here a little rubber o-ring as well as just a real super light coat of grease on the inside of this housing uh, just so we can make the impeller easily turn and fit into its place. All right, put the cover on and turn the shaft to the right. I can't do that and hold the camera at the same time, but uh, we're almost down in place and uh, that's what's next. We'll, put, we'll go ahead and finish turning that and putting it in place and put the bolts on. All right, we tightened things down, got our bolts on, we tightened them snug. Didn't uh, wrench down on them too hard. They're just fairly tight. Put a little grease on here. Put a little grease on the shaft as well as the splines there, as well as this gear shifter shaft as well. And we are ready to put this thing back on the motor. Got this thing back in place. Uh, you, you can use this vice grip to kind of help guide all those gears in place, uh, especially the shifter gear. Sometimes it's a little, doesn't line up exactly right. So having pair of vice grips on hand helps with that and just lining up these little tiny tabs right there there's one at the top and one at the bottom and just holding it holding it in place and getting it lined up and getting a couple bolts on both sides started as well as the center one here is the easiest way to get that back on it's not easy but it's the, I guess the best way uh, most efficient way and then you can loose the tighten these bolts uh, up after but all you need is about three bolts to get going get that thing in place and then you can tighten up the other ones after you get going there
All right, got my bolts in place. Everything's tightened down. Something I, I didn't mention is make sure that you grease your bolts up real good before you put them in there. Uh, that any basically anything that touches water, you're gonna want to grease up on this motor. And I just snug them down real good. And these are all metal to metal, so you can you can snug those down pretty good. Just enough so where you can at least get them off the next time you're, you're changing this out. So we're gonna go ahead and put this little cover back on. All right, we got the motor down, the water flowing, and we're gonna run some tests on this new water pump that we installed and make sure that the motor goes into forward and reverse and uh, do a little flush on it, make sure everything's good. All right, we got this thing cranked up, it's good. All right, everything's look, looking good, so we're getting ready to put the covers on, but I wanna reiterate, making sure that your bolts are all greased up. And again, anything sort of below the boat line or especially below this line here, this gasket here, uh, making sure that it's sprayed down with some WD-40 or anti-corrosion spray of some sort, uh, just to save yourself from the hassle of things uh, corroding up. And as you can see, there is corrosion, so you wanna make sure you can do everything you can to save this, these motors. As you can see on this motor, it's had several leaks over, over the years and there's corrosions built up um, in various spots. I uh, also wanna make sure that, again, you know, spray your bolts down. I use WD-40 on a lot of stuff, um, but making sure that your telltale is connected well in the back, otherwise you're gonna end up having water spraying inside your motor and you're gonna have issues like this. All right, before we put the cowlings on, one last thing I like to do is spray this motor down on uh, on the sides and bottom of this motor with W40, and usually below this gasket line uh, where the cover or where the covers sort of seal on there, and so just to keep everything kind of lubed up and just an anti-corrosion measure all the way around the motor. Uh, so I'm going to go through that process and I'll wipe it down with a rag, any excess up with the rag just to uh, make sure we're good to go. All right, one thing about the cowlings. Putting the cowlings back is not always easy. Everything has to line up. These little, this side here has to be kind of lined up. It's got to go back in the groove. You got to plug this back in. Um, don't lose these clips right here. These clips fall off. They're important because that's what holds the cowling on, at least the top part, that cover there. There's also a clip like that back here on the inside of there and when you put the cover on sometimes it slides so getting this lined up so that you can get your your little hex your sorry your hex bolt back in here is a challenge so getting all of this line back up what i usually do is put it in go around and make sure the things are kind of lined up and snapped in the right place you know i don't tighten them down i just leave them leave them loose and sometimes I have to tilt the motor to one side to get to this side when I'm working on it. And I'll go around and work on the other side. So uh, don't tighten anything down until you get everything kind of in place where it needs to go. All right, so we got the collings back on and things are good. Things are tightened down. I went around and tightened all the bolts down again, double checked everything. I think we're, for the most part, we're done with this maintenance. Um, and uh, just again, when you're putting these cowlings on, I always go sort of, I'll, I'll work from the top and then I'll start popping it down below. So usually lining up with these two little grommets there, same thing on this side, try to line that up and then I'll line the back as well as the front and then I'll work on the bottom. So it is not fun doing the cowlings, I can just tell you. But everything's good and we're gonna clean up we'll put the top back on and and uh pick up all the tools it's getting late we'll call it a day